Today, we tend to equate health with obtaining enough individual nutrients, and we forget about the actual food. History tells us this may not be the best approach. Perhaps there is more to food than its individual nutrients. In the mid-1800s, a brilliant chemist, Eustace Leibisch, figured out that food was composed of fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. At the time, scientists thought that all we needed from food was these three nutrients. Infant formula was created based on these nutrients, but unfortunately, by the early 1900s, studies demonstrated that 20% of formula-fed infants died before one year of age. There must be more to food than fat, carbohydrate, and protein. In the mid-1800s, a condition that caused numbness in the extremities, weakness in the legs, and difficulty walking was wreaking havoc in the U.S. and Europe. Scientists thought it was blood contamination or some type of bacteria. In 1987, Christian Ekman, a Dutch physician, was sent to Indonesia to study this strange disease. He noticed these same symptoms occurred in his laboratory chicken eating leftover military rations with rice. When a new cook demanded that civilian chicken should not be allowed to eat military rice, which was polished rice, the chicken returned to their standard unpolished rice feed, and within a few days they recovered. Ekman postulated that there was an important compound in the unpolished rice, rice that did not have its outer layer removed, that was vital to life. In 1912, Kashmir Funk isolated this active factor and named this new compound vitamin, after vita, meaning life, and amine from the structure of the compound he found in unpolished rice, later named thiamine, or vitamin B1. Vitamin deficiency causes beriberi, numbness, weakness, and difficulty walking. This vitamin, vitamin B1, was essential to life. As other vitamins were discovered, the E was dropped, and vitamin became vitamin. Once it was recognized that there were other nutrients in foods aside from fat, carbohydrates, and protein, exciting discoveries were made. B1, vitamin C, vitamin A, B12, folic acid, B6, vitamin D, vitamin E, and niacin were discovered. As new vitamins were being discovered, the role of essential minerals such as calcium, iron, and zinc were also discovered. Now we know everything about food that pertains to health. In order to ensure intake of these important vitamins and minerals, Americans began taking supplements, with their popularity increasing substantially in the 80s and 90s. According to the CDC, in the years between 1988 and 1994, supplement use grew more than 40 percent, increasing even more in 1999, with more than 50 percent of Americans taking supplements by 2006, multivitamin supplements being the most commonly used supplements. As the intake of multivitamin supplements increases, so does the incidence of hypertension, cancer, and diabetes. In the mid-1980s, scientists recognized that there were other compounds in plants that were beneficial to health. These plant chemicals, called phytonutrients, or phytochemicals, are not essential to the diet, but have been found to be beneficial to health. More than 25,000 phytonutrients are found in plant food. Phytonutrients are our body's protectors against free radicals, which can damage cell membranes, artery linings, and DNA. Phytonutrients act as antioxidants, protecting these structures and helping to prevent chronic disease, such as cancer, heart attacks, and diabetes. In 2011, Americans spent $30 billion on supplements, $12 billion on vitamin and mineral supplements alone. In the last year, a number of studies have indicated that that money may not be well spent. One study in the Annals of Internal Medicine reviewed 26 studies with 350,000 individuals on the role of vitamin supplementation in the prevention of chronic disease. The authors concluded that there was no evidence that vitamins or minerals decrease the incidence of heart disease, cancer, or reduce mortality in healthy individuals. 
Another study published in the British Medical Journal reviewed 50 studies on the impact of supplements on heart disease and heart attacks. They concluded that there was no benefit to taking vitamin or antioxidant supplements. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force in their 2014 statement recommends against the use of beta-carotene due to its increased risk of lung cancer in those susceptible. And they stated with moderate certainty that beta-carotene and vitamin E supplements offered no protection from cancer or heart disease. It's 2014, and we have yet to understand the impact of all phytonutrients on health. Scientists have yet to identify all the complex interactions between phytonutrients. Just when we think we know everything about the nutrients in food, another discovery is made. What else is in food?